Hi, in today's video I wanted to introduce the new TS-233. So it's a new low cost option. Um, it's Even though it's low cost, it's still got um, all the features of uh, some of the definitely more high spec NAS. Uh, obviously they might be able to do things a little quicker, but this NAS is an absolute powerhouse in its own right and I'll show that in a little demo later on. Um, so this NAS comes with 2 gig of RAM as standard, it's got a 64 bit quad core CPU. Um, and it's in a very nice small form factor, very quiet. Um, in fact, it's sat about um, 30 centimeters away from my microphone right now. Um, you really can't hear this NAS, it's, uh, it's very quiet. About all I can hear is the, the two hard drives in there that are spinning around. Um, so it's a very, very quiet NAS. Uh, just moving into a couple of the features. So it's got QTS5 built in as standard. Um, which supports some of the extra features. It's got a new uh, user interface. It supports the WireGuard VPN with the upgraded kernel. Um, so much better improved security, um, much more efficient VPNs, things like that. And it all comes with the new look. Um, so now we'll go through the, the hardware, talk you through some of the, the highlights and, and what the unit looks like on the front and back. Um, so the input and output options on the back, we've got a, a single one gig ethernet port. It's got two SATA 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive bays. That's SATA at 3, which works at 6 gig a second. Um, it's got a USB um, 5 gig port on the front, and it's got a couple of USB 2 ports on the back, uh, should you ever need to uh, attach something that's a bit on the, uh, the lower speed side of things. Um, it's incredibly energy efficient, uh, so if the drives are basically gone asleep because the the unit's gone inactive it's only using about three and a half watts of power um, even when in full operation with the drive spun up um, it's only just over 10 watts of power used so very very efficient um, in in how it works um, so here's a, a look at the uh, front and back. So the front's on the left-hand side there. So we've got a few different status lights letting you know uh, what's going on with the unit. There's a power button and it's also got the uh, USB one-touch copy button on the front. Uh, so you can map some functions in our hybrid backup sync application uh, for that button. So you can say, uh, when I push that button, I want to copy everything from the USB port into the NAS or the other way around. Uh, so you can choose different functions of what that button will do um, in the one-touch copy settings in the hybrid backup sync application. Um, on the rear of the device we've got the uh, smart cooling fan. We call it smart because it's uh, temperature sensing so it spins faster if it needs to if it's uh, a higher hotter ambient temperature let's say um, but for the for the most part you pretty much won't hear that fan. It's very very quiet. Um, we've got a reset button on the back so if you forget your password or something like that you can uh, use that reset button with a little pin in the hole. Uh, you get your gigabit Ethernet LAN port and the, the two USB 2 ports. Uh, right now I've got mine set up just using the power cable and the gigabit Ethernet LAN, LAN port. I've just got the two cables connected and that's everything you'll see in the demo will run over those two, uh, those two connections. Um, here's a little statistic with the uh, file transfer speeds. Um, so there's a little information at the bottom that left there telling you the test environment. Um, so we're able to fully max out the, uh, the 10 gig LAN port and the speed really doesn't change whether you use um, encryption on the drives or not. Uh, the performance is largely the same. The processor is powerful enough uh, to have the en encryption enabled and run almost at full speed. Um, the, uh, the read speed is basically the same. It's only the, uh, the, the write speed that was affected by a tiny amount. Um, so you can um, definitely use encryption on this uh, with very little loss in performance. Um, so just to go through how you'd install something in this, because you can't see from the pictures any um, obvious location where the drives are. Uh, so if I move to the next slide, you can see a sort of 3D schematic of it with the, uh, uh, the unit opening. Um, so to access the drive base, it's just uh, unscrewing a thumb screw on the base of the unit. Once you've done that, uh, the side of the chassis slides off and then you've got access to the two drives uh, that simply just pop out. In the orientation there, the drives are basically top loaded in. Um, the drive trays themselves are screwless if you're using three and a half inch discs. Uh, we still give you the screws in the box if you'd rather screw them in as well. Um, but we, uh, you will need screws to put two and a half inch discs. So if you wanted to use this with SSDs for it to be even quieter, um, we do supply screws in the box for the SSDs. So for anybody doing that, the, uh, the larger silver screws are for the three and a half inch disc. Um, the smaller black screws, uh, they're going to be for the two and a half inch disc and they're all supplied in the box. You'll get eight of each, so that two drives, four screws each. Um, so one of the other functions that you can do with this device is things like multimedia streaming. So with the multimedia streaming, with something like Plex, 
Um, so we've got um, different options within Plex, so you can do um, multimedia server technology. I should have removed the coming soon off there. It's working now. That's what I'm going to demo uh, for you in a moment. And we've also got our KN Media Sign Player if you want to do video transcoding as well. Um, suitable users for this NAS would be uh, home users, small business users, really anybody that needs a, a small NAS. You can do as much or as little as you want with this NAS. So you could just literally just have it as a backup target for computers on your network sitting quietly in the corner of the room. Um, or you could use more advanced features on it. So I've installed quite a few on this device. So if I come out of the, uh, the presentation there, uh, we'll look at the uh, the TS233 that I've got set up here. If I go to the control panel and go to the uh, the hardware section, you can see um, the different options. Sorry, system status screen. Uh, we can see the different uh, information on it. So it's got two gigs of RAM. It's got that quad core ARM processor at two gigahertz in there, um, and it's running QTS5. Um, so by default, it will come out the box with QTS5 already on it. Uh, if we look through extra information, we can see it's running quite cool there as well. Um, so the fan speed at uh, 1200 RPM, very low. Um, with it being such a large size as well, it's getting a lot of airflow movement uh, with almost no noise. Um, another thing I wanted to show here is just um, how little the NAS is doing. So the CPU is really only being used a, a small percentage there. Um, and the RAM use, uh, the 2 gig uh, fixed RAM that's in this device, uh, we've only used 30%. Um, now, running on this NAS right now, what I've got is quite a few different apps. I've got a hybrid mount application, which is uh, mapping a volume over from one of my other NAS. So I could pull some um, Plex content in. Um, I've got Plex Media Server running. And right now, even with those statist statistics that uh, I showed you here, uh, this is currently streaming um, to basically my living room TV. So I've got a couple of trailers on there that it's on loop uh, streaming those right now. Um, so it's really not pulling a lot of demand from the unit. Um, I've got Container Station, which you could use for different things. Uh, you could have a different type of use case. Pi Hole is one I've featured on the channel before. Um, lots of options you can use in the Container Station. Pretty much your imagination is the only limit there. Uh, I've got Hybrid Backup Sync, great for things like uh, Time Machine Backup into the NAS. If you wanted to configure that one touch copy button, uh, that's in there and running as well. Uh, and one of the features I mentioned in the uh, one of the first slides I showed you was the WireGuard VPN. So we have the QVPN service there, so you can enable the WireGuard VPN if you need to. Um, and on top of all that, I've also got QVR Elite running. Uh, so QVR Elite, uh, on this unit, you will get two free perpetual licenses uh, for two IP cameras. You can uh, pay for subscriptions for more if you wish, uh, but you do get two free straight out the box. Um, and this NAS is able to run our QVR Elite software. Uh, so it's the lowest cost NAS we do that can run the, uh, the QVR Elite software as well. Um, so we'll move into the, uh, uh, the Plex side of things. So on this NAS, um, one caveat I will say is I probably wouldn't want to use uh, Plex Media Server on a NAS that doesn't have a GPU if I'm very heavy on transcoding. Um, simply because the GPU is going to be much more efficient, the graphics adapter on higher end units is going to be more capable at doing those transcodes. Um, but if you are watching, uh, storing 1080p content and watching it back on a player that can play 1080p content natively, um, there's absolutely no problem running this NAS as a, a, a Plex source. Uh, so we can see here I've got a couple of trailers loaded in. Um, so I standard uh, version of Plex here. Um, it says Go Premium at the top because I'm not using a Plex Pass. Uh, just to illustrate that, I'll go to the settings, go down to the transcoder. There's no options here for hardware transcoding, so I'm not doing any transcoding or anything like that. Uh, but what I'll do now is I'll click to the top and go to the dashboard, and we can see that uh, my NVIDIA Shield uh, on my living room TV is playing back with direct play. Um, the native file format here of this uh, Star Wars Episode 9, um, the Force Awakens trailer that's just playing there. Uh, so we can see 86 megabits a second, it's playing it absolutely no problem. If we go and check out uh, what that file is, so if I go in here, I'll get the info on the file just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so this is just a 1080p um, MKV file, H.264, um, quite a high bit rate. Um, and it's playing absolutely flawlessly. There's no buffering or anything like that that's happening. Um, so if I go back in there, 
Um, you can see it is just playing the the clocks counting up quite nicely with where it is in the file absolutely no buffering needed um, so it works absolutely great um, i can play another stream as well off this absolutely no problem so if i was to click play on the same file here on the computer um, it would launch straight into that i've got it muted down at the bottom so here's just the trailer of that playing along um, and it's absolutely playing uh, flawlessly no problem at all um, no buffering no skipping um, works really good uh, I'm going to stop that before it goes too far into it, just so we don't get any uh, copyright issues. Uh, but it's playing absolutely flawlessly there with the uh, the multiple streams uh, using Plex on this NAS. Uh, so just to summarize, it's the uh, the TS-233, uh, the new uh, low-cost NAS that we've got. Um, I think it retails for about uh, just over the £200 mark, um, including VAT uh, without drives, so that's UK VAT. Um, so it's a very low cost, very quiet, very small footprint device um, and you literally just need to put it somewhere that you can have a network cable connected and a power cable um, and you're able to do all of these functions and a lot more. The app center is absolutely full of different options that you can run. If I click into the app center and go to all apps, you can see just how many apps there are. Um, I've only installed an absolute select few so you could install things like QSearch, you could use our QMagi. Um, software here for facial recognition to manage your photo library things like that um, there is a lot of different um, uh, applications that you can run on this NAS um, if anybody has any questions uh, about the TS233 please do ask them in the comments section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible okay thanks for watching bye